sure how bad the wind noise is going to be, so I'm going to keep the camera hopefully shielded from it. But if you watch my channel, you'll know that uh, my Mustang was rented, so I am in a rental car. I have happened to be blessed with the rare opportunity to drive none other than a 2018 Kia Optima. So, uh, going over the car right now, we have some silver wheels on here that are 16s. We got 16s on here. And if you'll go ahead and notice, they're just they're just an awesome uh, bronze color. That's not that's not brake dust. That's the they just they're they're just really cool, unique colors and uh, they look great. So some sweet 16-inch wheels on there. We got uh we got some amazing halogen headlights right here that just look just they look. We got a vent here that does nothing. And it's all finished in um, depressing silver metallic here, which looks great on this car. On the back, you can see they went with the sleek design, no spoiler or anything like that. You got the single exit exhaust tip that uh, is basically just a circle inside of a big oval. As you can tell, this car is just in great shape. It looks great. So, outside looks amazing in this color. It's just an ideal car for anybody who's into cars. Heading uh, under the hood, you just pull this little lever here, unleash the beast. The hood is open. What we're dealing with here is a 1.8 liter four cylinder. Four cylinders in this bad boy. You got this Ram Air right here. That's great. I think we should go ahead and hop on in the Kia. So right here you have this great switchblade key. Um, so we'll go ahead and open that up. Uh, uh, open, open that up. There we go, all right. All right, so uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do the driving portion of the rental car. So, this is the 2018 Kia Optima. Now me personally, I'm coming from a car that has a clutch, so to make this feel a little more natural to me, I always put the foot e-brake down and push on that when I start the car so I don't feel like a complete moron when I start it. So you start it up, it's not exciting at all. It just kinda hums. Everything else doesn't move. It's quiet, and once it warms up, you can hardly tell it's on, and that really bothers me, I hate that. Right off the bat, it's pretty smooth, but that's not saying much coming from a Mustang with blown out struts in it. But uh, one thing that's nice about it is, you can hit these speed bumps pretty quick. The brakes are, they stop you. The gas makes you go, not very fast, the throttle response is terrible. There's about an inch of travel of dead space, but you can fix that right here if you switch the drive mode to sport mode. Oh, that's eco. If you push it twice, it goes to sport mode. So we'll see how the acceleration is in sport mode. Oh, there's cars coming. We're gonna go. Good thing I'm in sport mode. All right, foot to the floor. 40. All that sport mode seems to do is hold the gears, which just is terrible, it makes a horrible noise, the car sounds disgusting. The acceleration is so bad that if you were pulling up to a stoplight and in one lane there was just a semi-truck and in the other lane there was a Kia Optima, I'd get behind the semi-truck because it's probably going to accelerate a little bit faster than the Optima does. Like I said before, this has what I believe is a 1.8 four-cylinder, which is just tiny and there's no torque at all. I'm pretty sure an electric toothbrush has more torque than this car does. So I kind of briefly touched on brakes and acceleration already. Coming up here, I'm gonna have to make a turn and kind of slow down beforehand, so I'll give the brakes another little shot. Mm. They're not very confidence inspiring, that's for sure. Do they stop the car? Yes. Um, I think I know why the brakes on this car aren't the best, and that's probably because they know that it's not like you can go fast in this car in the first place, so you don't need great brakes to stop you when you're barely moving in the first place. As far as visibility goes, it's... Eh, it's alright. It's not bad. Out the front it's okay, other than right here in the corners. These A-pillars with like this mirror thing are just miserable. They block a ton of your vision, and they just kind of suck. The blind spot monitors, they beep more than an episode of Hell's Kitchen when Gordon Ramsay's mad. They don't really do much. Oh, we're going. Yeah, no one was even in my blind spot and went off, but you know, 
we're gonna send it still. As far as the actual interior goes on this car, take a BMW from 2007 and then make the buttons a little bigger like you're making a little Tex product and that's what you have with the interior of this car. It doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel nice, it basically just seems like you took a BMW and ripped everything off of the design of the interior. These seats are about as comfortable as the bleachers from my middle school. Um, they have no bolstering or lateral support. Uh, your butt falls asleep after about 15 minutes of driving and they just are pitiful. Uh, the cloth, I will say, isn't the worst cloth I've ever felt in my life. One thing, I'm not actually gonna be sarcastic about this, one thing I do kind of like is the gauges. They're big and easy to read, um, and in the center there's like a digital display that you can go through some stuff. But to get through that digital display, you have to look at this horrible steering wheel, uh, which it just, there's so, the buttons are confusing, and there's a lot of them, and it just, it doesn't make sense until you like drive this car for like a week, and then it starts to kind of make sense, but it still is not great. It's very, it's confusing. It's kind of pointless, honestly. The steering wheel, it feels cheap, which is to be expected, and uh, it has like these notches up at the top to maybe make it feel a little bit sportier for when you kick it into sport mode, or accidentally kick it into eco mode, I don't know. I cannot possibly imagine how slow this car can be in eco mode if it was that slow in sport mode. I, you know what, we're gonna try it. One, I'm gonna do this because I know there's no possible way, even if a cop sees me, that they're gonna recognize anything like I'm flooring the car because it just, it doesn't look like it. And like, I'm not gonna get in trouble for like exhibition of speed or anything because you cannot exhibit any sort of speed in this car. Uh, there's cars in front of me, but I cannot imagine that I would catch up to them if I had my foot to the floor at the screen line. So going back to the interior of this car, does it feel cheap? Uh, yes. It, it feels cheap. It's basically like the most budget optioned out car you could get. There's, I think that Hertz, as a rental company, was like, give me the cheapest thing you have and put a screen in it so they think it's not that bad. And that's what we have here. Oh, why does the throttle feel better in eco mode? Back to the interior. Everything in here. That's the steering wheel you're hearing right now. Everything's cheap. Everything in here is cheap. And like I said, they're fooling you because you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but I don't know why you'd want to use that. If you don't have Apple CarPlay, basically the screen looks like it's from a 2008 Android and it's terrible. It looks horrible, it's gross, the resolution's bad, but you plug in your iPhone, you go to Apple CarPlay and the resolution is still terrible, but it looks like an iPhone now, so it's better. So for like interior amenities, um, looking around here, it's got this compartment thingy with a cigarette lighter, an aux port, and a USB port, and another 12 volt actually. That's nice, it's got two. It's got, no, that, I thought I saw a little carpet thing down there that's soft, but it's not, it's just plastic. There's a lady next to me just staring at me while I do this, and it's really awkward. Oh, eco mode on the on-ramp, this is dangerous. I don't know if I'll get up to speed in time. Okay, so right now I'm at 40. I'm gonna put my foot to the floor. 45. 50, 60, okay, okay, in regular mode. Okay, no, there's, I'm not, I'm not coming over another lane. I hate this blind spot monitoring, it's terrible. It's awful. Well, I feel like this would be good, this engine would be good in like a go-kart maybe. That, then maybe it would be like okay. But it, this just seems like Kia was thinking, what's the bare minimum we can put in this car so it's legal on the highway? And so people that like don't know anything about cars will think it's fine. And then they came up with this and threw it in this car. I think that's exactly what happened. Wind noise, now that I don't have any music on, is actually not the best. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks. Visibility out the back, now that I'm looking, is pretty bad. Like, my Mustang has better visibility out the back than this does. I feel like I'm in a sixth generation Camaro. The steering feel is so numb that it's just, it's miserable. Turning is horrible. If you're looking for good handling, I think a Gurney would be a better option for you than the Kia Optima would be. For a rental, is it bad? No, it could be worse. I could be, well, I think it could be worse. My car's in the shop and I'm grateful to have a rental, don't get me wrong, but uh, coming from like a car person standpoint, that's where this review is coming from. So please recognize that and please don't get all like angry in the comments and yell at me and say I'm like 
a rich, privileged kid that's complaining about a rental car. Just shut up, please. It's fine. It's fine. Calm down. It's a joke. Ooh, there's a Panamera next to me. Let's, let's race him. I think they have cruise control on, and I was flooring and they were still pulling for me. So, most cars I review are semi-exhilarating, you can have fun in them, and they handle pretty well, they have good acceleration, uh, etc. There's a lot of cars that I've driven that aren't that way, that aren't designed for that, like my dad's Fusion, for example. It's not designed to be a fast car, handle well, but it's quick and can be fun, and it can handle a corner or two. This just feels awful. Like, okay, if you are one of those people that's just like, oh, I just need, I just need a car to get from point A to point B, this is the car for you. No, that's literally, that's it. That's all it does. I cannot imagine waking up every day of my life thinking, wow, I'm paying for that silver Kia Optima in my garage, and I'm gonna walk out this door and get in that car and enjoy my experience. Like, that just wouldn't happen. And I guess people just don't think about that whenever they have a car like this. It's, it's just so boring. I don't understand. Oh, here comes a corner. Let's see how it does. I'm not gonna slow down as much as... Holy mother of God! That... That's got a lot of body roll. I'm just looking in front of me at this Corolla that's finished in silver with, like, the most basic wheels. And I just think to myself, wow, that must, like, suck. That must be so boring. And then I... I think about it and, like, I'm in that car basically. Wow, okay. So I just got cut off. You saw a full sass there. <laughs> I need some context so you guys don't think I'm a complete jerk. So back there, it's like a four-way thing, and there's stop, uh, where I'm at, it's like a main road. There's three lanes on both sides. There's a median in the middle, and then on each side, there's a stop sign and people were just like crossing randomly and they weren't stopping and waiting for traffic to keep going and like I have the right of way there. So I was trying to go and she just pulls right in front of me, I had to brake and somehow the car stopped me with these horrible brakes but she stops and then she looked at me, she gave me a dirty look. Why are you giving me a dirty look? You're the one that just cut me off in the middle of a three lane road. I guess it's six lane road technically. Back to what I was saying. Right now I'm pulling up to my chiropractor and all jokes aside, for a rental car, this isn't bad. I cannot see myself driving one of these every single day. The seats are actually stiff, the interior is actually pretty cheap feeling, and it's just boring. It does what you need to do, but like the acceleration I feel like is borderline dangerous because it's so slow. I've driven a lot of cars, and I think this is the most boring one I've ever driven. Like, ever. I've driven a lot of slow stuff. This just is horrible, and what's what shocks me is that a majority of cars out on the road today are similar to this and people are okay with that. So coming from the standpoint of a car enthusiast, I don't know how a majority of the world drives cars like this. I just don't understand it. Brief recap of the Kia Optima. Acceleration's terrible. This spec, it's an FE, which I don't know if F stands for like fleet or something, but it's an FE. It feels really cheap on the inside. Uh, it has Apple CarPlay, which I like, and that's about it. Um, that's one of the main things I like about this car, but a lot of other cars have that, so it's not very special. The transmission feels kind of awful. The shifts are weird. If you put it in sport mode, it just holds RPMs and it feels terrible. Sometimes the shifts can feel a little rough, but it's not bad. It does handle bumps and stuff pretty well. It's pretty smooth. If you're looking for something to get from point A to point B, this is your car. If you're looking for something miserable and boring, this is your car. If you're looking for something that is good on gas, this is okay. It gets like 25 average, generally, when I'm driving it, so it'd probably get more for you. If you're like anybody else that likes any sort of fun, or quality, or anything, probably not the car for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is your first video, please stick around and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. There'll be, hopefully, not more videos like this in a rental car, but there'll be more videos of my Mustang, and other reviews, and installs, and all things like that, so. Go ahead and stay tuned, subscribe if you like the video. If you like the video, like the video. If you didn't like the video, like the video. Uh, comment if you want, roast me if you want in the comments. Say something nice if you want. Thanks for stopping in, thanks for checking out one of my videos, and I guess hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.